Welcome back, everybody, to Marathon Phoenix Commentary. My name is Ryoko TK. We're going to be discussing episode 25 here um, and the forthcoming level, which is Roke Fortress. Um, as you can see in the video title, the level is spelled R O Q U E F O R T R E S S. Um, it's it's a uh, it's a portmanteau of two names, Roquefort, which is a kind of blue cheese, and uh, Fortress, which is a, a fortress. Le level names are really not my strong suit. Now uh, this is one of my favorite levels. It's I think one of my uh, coolest and most stylish levels. And originally it was going to be a secret level. So much like uh, a couple of the other good stylish levels, it originally wasn't going to be mandatory. But uh, it ended up being so good that I just had to put it in. So this is actually the first level uh, chronologically that I made with um, bottomless pits of death. I guess they have a bottom, but pits of death. Um, falling into the void kills you. Um, much like intervals, this is a very open level. Uh, it's a very nonlinear level, and it's basically the same objective. You find two uplink chips, you put them into two slots, and you're done. Uh, and as you can see in front of you, there is a rocket launcher, which means this level is the introduction to the rocket launcher. Um, this is the second to last level in the game, so it's finally time that you you get it. And um, of course, it was originally a secret level, but when I made it mandatory, I decided why not just leave the rocket launcher there. Originally, it was going to be earlier on in the game, but it got repurposed to being um, the the penultimate level. This level is relatively easy and relatively short. Um, it's probably easy just because of this yellow recharger to my right that you can uh, abuse fairly safely. So on this level, uh, defenders, of course, are everywhere, and this is kind of the level where I intentionally um, designed defender traps with their ability to fly in mind. Um, uh, as This level has a bunch of switches uh, to open doors and to make progress, um, and Every single switch on this level also opens a uh, trapdoor somewhere else to let more monsters uh, roam around the level. Um, these big doors here, once you open them, they stay open. So, and yes, that is an intentional solution to that fight. Um, as you open the doors, they stay open. So as you explore the level, um, monsters have an increased ability to track you down and uh, just cause you trouble in general. So this level just gets harder and harder as it progresses, even though it's a very small level. Um, you are pretty much never in a safe zone, and that's kind of, that was kind of intentional, and I kind of like how it turned out. <laughs> like these enemies, um, they, uh, when I hit the switch, the switch that I hit earlier opens access to the first uplink chip, and, uh, of course it just activates a bunch of enemies too, and they're just able to kind of walk up to you from wherever you are and fight you, so this level has a, a really dynamic flow, and it changes every time. Uh, originally this level was supposed to be a lot larger. I made it in Forge, and it ran out of polygons a lot earlier than I thought I would, so uh, unfortunately it uh, stayed kind of small, but I was experimenting with this uh, level and the bottomless pit stuff. It just requires some scripting that's only possible with Aleph 1. And I had never really done it before. But, um, you know, jumping over pits of death, not really the, the feature of this level, but it's a constant threat of being knocked off or, um, you know, falling into the void. And I think just the darkness of the uh, exterior areas contrasts really well with the very bright interior spaces. Um, 
I don't go for bright that often. I usually go for kind of gloomy or, sh uh, you know, shadowy. Uh, uh, to an extent, anyway. Usually a lot of, like, mid-range lighting uh, tones, I guess. But on this one, I uh, deliberately went with extremely bright interior spaces. Just so they would stand out like this, like this part does. So... And um, I guess the other interesting thing about this level is that it is, um, it's very uniform, like stylistically. Uh, most of the rooms in this level look pretty much the same, uh, which is not something I go for on the whole. I usually try to, um, I try to mix it up, I try to mix up color schemes, I try to mix up kind of the architecture. I want each room to look distinctly different. And in this case, that's not... In this level, that's not really the case. I use the same textures throughout. I use the same sort of architectural features, like these white columns and beams, and uh, sort of the lights on the right wall there. I use it throughout the level um, to give it a very I, I, a deliberately uniform appearance. I don't. I'm not really sure why I did that. I think. I think I got the idea from Rubicon, probably. Because that's a problem that that game has way too much, is uh, very indistinct spaces. And um, just kind of, you know, sort of monotone level design. But when used well, and used um, in a limited sense, it can uh, it can lend a very very cool sort of palette to your level. And uh, of course, I use the same trick on the level, the face of modern gaming, which you'll recall is pretty much all gray. You know that level stands out in its grayness, and this level kind of stands out in its with its you know white columns and that kind of thing. But like I said earlier, pretty much every switch triggers enemies somewhere else, and that's why that, uh, that uplink chip that I just grabbed was sitting on a on a platform you had to lower. It, it doesn't just trigger that juggernaut. Actually, it might. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it triggers enemies somewhere else on the level, too. And it uh, just forces you to hit that switch just to activate some more enemies and to keep adding enemies into the pool. Um, because the level is so small and so interconnected, it's kind of like a like a complex arena almost. They, uh, you just watched the uh, explode, the line explosion glitch in action there. Those two rockets should have killed that entire batch of enemies, but because the uh, the rockets exploded on a line between two polygons, um, in this case it was probably the edge of the door and the room bes beyond the door or something like that. The rocket exploded on that line, and so 
there was no explosion, so nobody really died. It's screwed up, and I guess the solution would be for me to use fewer lines and fewer polygons, because um, there appears to be no... Either no way to fix the glitch, or no motivation to fix the glitch, so... I just kind of rolled with it. This is a secret and a secret and a secret. Um, three of the seven skulls on this level are, are attained right here. The first secret, and then there's a teleporter inside that secret to go up to the ledge, and then from that ledge you can jump to another ledge, which constitutes a third secret. So, sort of clever, I guess. Um, I think I made this level before I uh, introduced the secret skulls thing. But my favorite part of the level, this is uh, this is it right here. This is the boss fight. Um, gold defenders again. But in this situation, it's a lot different because you don't know where they are. And uh, your first time playing this level, you won't know that there are gold defenders. But as when you plug in each uplink chip, it introduces one into the level as well as defenders elsewhere. So now there are lots of really dangerous enemies roaming around. I don't know where they are. I could try to just leave the level, and actually, when I play this game normally, I, I usually do. But I figured I would, I would continue my no cheese uh, mentality and just go for it. Well, anyway, um, this is going to pretty much wrap up um, Rogue Fortress here. I'm just cleaning up the last of these defenders before I move on. Um, the next and final video is going to cover the last levels. Um, one of which, of course, is the indomitable Another Dimension. One of the most insane levels I've ever made. Um, but it'll, it'll be a treat, so just stick around for that. Uh, thanks for watching.